Hello, it's Elizabeth from Elizabeth's Oracle. Welcome to the Sun into Aries 2017 edition of my newsletter. Um, here are the start times for each section. We're going to cover the Sun's journey through the cardinal fire sign of Aries. And I'm going to do a special report on Uranus because um, Uranus, as a lot of you know, is in a long transit of Aries. And I hardly ever step back and talk about the bigger planets, the outer planets, but this is an important transit. So we're going to focus in on that today. So again, thank you for tuning in and enjoy. All right, you guys, so let's jump into the Aries cycle for 2017. Really big time ahead, lots of progress, lots of forward movement, and that is because Aries is a cardinal sign and it is a fire sign, which means we are going to feel enlivened, enthusiastic, but more importantly, we have a lot of cardinal energy that's quite pronounced. Remember how last year it was all mutable, mutable, mutable square? Now, we are moving into some strong cardinal squaring, which means, you know, we are separating the wheat from the chaff. Um, we've shed pretty much most of the old, and now we're staking out new ground in a new world, new reality, very Uranian themes. And um, that is going to be a big part of the cycle. Uranus there and Pluto. I'm going to point out a lot about Pluto. So first, Let's just take a look at the planets that are moving around and the retrogrades that are coming up. I feel like the start of this cycle is going to be very strong, very busy, because we are building to a big square between Jupiter and Pluto. Um, anytime we're dealing with Pluto, Uranus, or Neptune, it's big. <laughs> we talked about that. And the buildup takes days, if not weeks. Um, to happen. Um, some people will say months, you know, that we're under the influence of it. Uh, so we have this really big one coming up on the 30th. I'm going to show you this chart in a second, but we then start to have planets go retrograde. So we got our next Mercury retrograde, no big deal. We have Saturn going retrograde, does this every year. Again, not a big deal. Um, but it does mean slowing down. Venus heads back into Pisces, Mars is mellowing out in Taurus. So um, I feel like this cycle is going to be marked by a very busy first uh, 10 days or so, two weeks, and then things start to, you know, settle down a bit. So let's look at some charts. So the first one that I want to pull up, of course, is the day that the sun moves into Aries. Um, so just look, I've highlighted in this video all the planets and cardinal signs are in the yellow so that you can easily tell what's going on here. So for those of you who are used to looking at charts, you can see that we've got a lot in cardinal signs and you can also tell that the angles are oppositions, everything in Aries opposite to Jupiter in Libra and that squaring and everything in Aries squaring Pluto there in Capricorn. Um, so you know that when we have T-squares, you know, it's always a sort of push comes to shove. We go one way or the other, um, or we have to navigate our way along a continuum um, that has opposites on either side. Um, this time again, the big story is the square coming up between Pluto there in Capricorn and Jupiter in Libra. Um, so let's move to the new moon here. Uh, again, underscoring this theme, look at everything all lined up there in Aries with Uranus being in the really strong degrees here. Look how far there um, Uranus is hitting those strong degrees. You now, you guys know that when we um, the planets are in the higher degrees of the sign, that means we're amplifying the energies of that sign. So we've got Mercury there. We've got um, Uranus, again, strengthening all of the qualities of Aries. So when we talk about Aries, what do we say? We say it's the instigator, the initiator. It's ruled by Mars. So it is just this vital life-giving force that gives us a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of courage, and a lot of support to initiate things. Um, so when we, let's move on to the, I'm going to move to the big square between Jupiter and Pluto. No small thing here. Again, when we involve Pluto, it is really a big deal. Um, Pluto, again, is that underworldly energy. It pulls up stuff 
that maybe we haven't dealt with uh, that, you know, comes up. It's there. It's always been there, but we've sort of maybe ignored it. Um, and so it pulls it up front and it's, again, I feel like it's, it's a great material. We think of uh, it being the underworld where, where is all the gold? Where are the minerals? Where are the precious things? They're deep in the earth. So if we look at it from a symbolic place, you know, Pluto is a great place for mining uh, material for our lives that we really need to um, put to work. And in, it's in industrious Capricorn, one of the best signs out there for getting things done and taking a long view of things. Um, so I like these energies, you know, but then you guys know me, I love initiating <laughs> energies. I have a full cardinal cross in my own chart. So um, that's helpful. Let's look at the full moon in this cycle, which is April 10th. And again, the moon there full pulling with Jupiter going opposite of everything that's in Aries and that coming off of that square just 10, to, 10 11 days later. Um, so still very much under that influence in close angles um, to Pluto, those 90 degree angles. So, you know, from there, that influence is going to be there this cycle. I feel like this is going to be a time you're going to be making a lot of choices uh, and you're going to be given a lot of new opportunities. Now, things to point out at this point, we will have some of those retrogrades having kicked in. Um, we will also have Venus having moved retrograde back into Pisces. So we will, I feel like, again, this buildup to the big Jupiter square with Pluto is kind of the exciting time. Um, I want to put a little graphic here that I made of all the squares to Pluto that are going to happen during this cycle. So it doesn't just, it isn't just the Jupiter thing. It's like everything that moves through Aries and everything as it moves through Libra um, all go up against Pluto. So again, we have that big energy happening throughout this cycle, um, which again, Aries is excitement. Aries is uh, initiating. Uh, so you can look at this as a good thing. Uh, and I'm going to concentrate next on the Uranus aspect because it's here throughout in all these charts. You continue to see Uranus there and we don't often talk about it. Um, so I do want to, you know, focus in on that because it it's influencing everything that's in Aries, just like for the last, you know, year and so many charts I talked about. Neptune being that influence while everything was in Pisces, just subtly influencing. Well, Uranus is not so subtle and <laughs> neither is Aries. So um, let's get to that part of this, this video. Okay, so let's step back and look at the bigger picture here. So Uranus started venturing into Aries back in 2010, kind of got its feet wet, then went retrograde as the planets do back into Pisces, and it didn't come in to Aries for good or for the long part of the transit until March 11th of 2011, which a lot of you will remember was the day of the Fukushima event. Um, it is staying there until May of next year, which is why I'm doing this special on Uranus, because I want you guys to think about this. Um, this is going to be the second to last Aries sun cycle where we have the sun and Uranus, both in Aries, also were hitting the strong degrees of Uranus, meaning the most powerful ones, although some people may rightfully argue all the Pluto-Uranus squares <laughs> were, you know, the, the strongest aspect, uh, you know, of this transit. But either way, we're hitting really caffeinated, you know, points. And so um, Uranus brings change sometimes in the form of chaos, um, but it, it is there, it is unpredictable, it is known as the wild card, it's electric, and you see the, um, some people liken it symbol to antennas or the two moons, kind of listening with both ears, so it's about big ideas, it's about um, big picture issues, uh, and after next May, it starts to go into Taurus. So this is May of 2018, but later in the year, when it's retrograde again, as it does every year, usually goes in August, sometime in August, um, November of 2018, it will head back into Aries, but it will leave 
um, for good on March 7th of 2019. So again, very important that we look at our lives 2010 to 2019 and say, what did Uranus, what was it trying to bring in for me? So I actually did, went back to my favorite astrology book on the outer planets and um, put it here in the description box. And the myth of Uranus, uh, the original sky god of the Greeks, is very instructive. So this was the sky god who would lay with Gaia, the earth, uh, mother earth at night and make all these children. Well, the planet again, I don't know if I'm giving the correct Greek pronunciation, Uranus, or what we've come, come to pronounce as Uranus or Uranus, um, would make these children, first the Titans, then the Cyclopes, and toss them into the ocean. He's very unhappy with his creations. <laughs> Just toss them in the ocean. You don't like them. Um, and again, the, the symbology is how much of our creation uh, do we just throw away? Do we disregard and think it's just not good enough? It's, you know, it's not what we had in mind. We had this big vision and this is inferior. And so we constantly do this. Um, again, I love the Greeks because I feel like the, ins the insights that they gave us a couple thousand years ago are so relevant. Anyways, Gaia, Mother Earth, got a little tired of their progeny being uh, tossed into the ocean. So she got Kronos, who later becomes Saturn, so think Chronicles, you know, time, Saturn, to castrate Uranus, because um, the Greeks love a colorful story, God bless them, <laughs> and um, part of the blood from the phallus goes into the earth and becomes the Furies, and the phallus itself is tossed into the ocean and becomes Aphrodite, or Venus, and Howard Sesportis, this author who's since passed, whose work I just love, his interpretation on all this was, you know, the blood becoming the Furies, Uranus has come to represent radical change. You know, it shows up in our lives and disrupts, that's our common word that we love, disruption. Um, it shows up and it forces change. And the Furies are the parts of us that are getting angrier and angrier when we're stuck in a situation that's not working, or envy is one of them, when we see that somebody has something we want. And, well, it's not about being mad at that person. It's something internal that's happening with us that says, I want that. So when we can recognize that and say, oh, I need to go get some of that. <laughs> You know, uh, then we can use that in a constructive way. Um, the other way that the Furies show up is when someone is bold and courageous, you know, Uranus and Aries, and starts making change, the Furies can show up in the people around us who are madder than hell that we maybe break out of an oppressive situation. You know, we stop drinking the Kool-Aid. We break the pitcher, in fact. Um, and so people can be very nasty and unpleasant when we do that because we're reflecting back to them the ability to change and transform our lives, which is incredibly powerful. Um, so make no mistake, either way, when you're dealing with the Furies, they are powerful energy. Now, what's instructive about this, this wonderful Greek myth is that the phallus becomes, you know, this creative tool, if you <laughs> think of it that way, becomes Aphrodite, Venus, the goddess of love. So I think, you know, and, and again, I'm, I'm sort of cribbing from Howard here, so I want to give all due respect and, and love to his work, which I think is just fantastic, just one of my all-time favorites. Um, and I'll put a link to his book in the description box, though I'm not an affiliate. I'm not here trying to sell you anything. Um, it's just when something's solid and you go back to it year after year and go, yep, Yep, still holds up. I mean, that's a, a wonderful piece of work. And it's on the outer planet, so we should all know what's going on with them and where they're hitting our charts. Um, so anyways, back to Venus slash Aphrodite. The idea of doing things with balance and decorum and tact. So we are living in a time where there are amazing changes, amazing progress. Um, in America, we're seeing job creation. We're seeing expansion. Um, we're seeing a time of new opportunities coming online. We're seeing the old just being washed out and 
put to rest where a lot of us are really happy um, that that there are just all kinds of new opportunities and abilities coming online for us. Um, and that's that is a very Uranian thing, the new, uh, the innovative. Uh, so the thing is with Venus, though, what she asks, again, uh, she rules two signs, Taurus, and in this example, Libra, um, which again is all about tact, you know, and, and trying to do it graciously. So we don't walk in and, you know, turn over everything and upset everybody as much as we can. Um, we try to do it tactfully and take you know, each thing one, one bit at a time. And so that's sort of the lesson in that myth about Uranus. And the reason I'm bringing everything up in this video is because Uranus is in the house <laughs> and it's been in the house, but when the sun and Venus and Mercury and all these other guys are in Aries, they just sort of percolate and stimulate that energy and get it you know, more enlivened and more emboldened. And when it, you know, you're talking about Aries, a fire sign, the initiating fire sign, it's saying, what do you want to do next? You know, what do you want to create is this is our fundamental core astrological energy of creation. It initiates the whole astrological year. This is a new turning of the cycle and it's got Uranus in the background. So, and again, not to segue too much you guys i appreciate your support and that's awesome but if you don't know where uranus is in your chart and how the heck this aries placement is creating changes is it sitting on your venus making you make changes in your core relationships is it in your career house i'm gonna run a special we'll talk about that in a second in the resources section but I'm just going to do a little special on Uranus in case you've never even looked up where your Uranus is. Um, it stays in a sign for approximately um, seven, as we see here, parts from 2010 to 2019. So 12 signs, seven years, 84. Yes, it takes about 84 years to make a whole trip around the um, astrological wheel. So we usually only experience it in each sign once in our lives um and certainly that we're aware of you know maybe you'll get one sign twice or two signs twice but that's putting you at like 98 years old so um again really important to know your uranus know where it is looking at changes that are coming into your life you may feel like where is this coming from and you know why do i keep getting this message you know what's all this disruption and aries is asking us to embrace the chaos to look at it and say what are my new opportunities and what do i want with this you have a birth chart birth chart excuse me that's set up so that you are activated at certain times in your life and Uranus is bringing change uh, to the world and into our lives and so you've just got to look at your placement in that and see what the opportunities are okay so all right <laughs> so I visited with my friend Christy Ayala hi Christy <laughs> um, on her show Christy's connection to the soul the link is in the description box and Christy also has a new book and I, I want you guys to um, go out and support her uh, wonderful tools in this book again if you're initiating getting things done and you sort of need a little support a little more insight her book is great she also does readings as well highly recommend her services and readings. Um, mine are more on the astrological side. Um, so if you do want a reading, here's my YouTube special. If you buy a reading, you get five free minutes. And this is the uh, Uranus special, which I'm going to run till April 30th of 2017. Um, if you happen to see this video during that time and you want to know where your Uranus is and how it's impacting your chart, if you buy a 20 minute reading or longer, I will throw in a copy of your natal chart and a natal report, which explains your basic 10 planets, where they are and what that means. Uh, and then we can go over where Uranus is and how it is impacting you and what it is asking you to change or do differently 
Uh, so we can look at all that. Otherwise, I'm Elizabeth from Elizabeth's Oracle. Pop over to my site. Uh, you can sign up for a free newsletter. Whatever you're comfortable doing. Any subscriptions, I appreciate. And I'm going to wind it down here because it looks like my light from the sunshine is fading away. But I thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm just wishing you all such a, like, I, you know me. I just, the fire signs, I go crazy. I love them. Love the, I mean, I love them. <laughs> all the fire sign people. Um, let's get some real stuff done. And let's just get out there and just keep you know, creating uh, new, fabulous, wonderful, improved things in the world. And I wish you all a wonderful Aries cycle. And we will see you when the sun heads into grounded. And I love Taurus too. So, you know, like it's all good. We will see you when the sun heads into Taurus. Thank you so much for watching.